knocked away. Picked up by Andre from oh, three quarters. Oh. Parks and Keith hit it. He had his eyes on the prize and let it fly. Oh, the music stopped. I was like getting my groove on. What's going on, <laughs> you Tanimals out there? Another episode of the Tanimonium Sports Show, part of the Vendetta Sports Media Podcast Network, broadcasting live on Twitch TV every Tuesday, Eastern Standard Time, 6.30 p.m. Exclusively. I already said that, except for last week, though, because um, two-thirds of the, of the show were... Um, out making the mogul moves with Trey Daubert out there in the city of sin, not not sin city, but Las Vegas, Nevada. As I already said, I'm your host Brian Tan. With me, as always, Jefferson Legal himself, aka Jackson Law, J Law. How the hell are you? I don't see no desert tan on you. No, dude. Listen, first off, I'm lucky that I didn't fry to a crisp. I was out there, the, the, which the weather was actually really good. It's actually really good. There's actually one morning where I got up and it was, you know, you know, it was daylight outside. And it was actually cold enough to where I put on pants and a sweatshirt because the wind was blowing so hard. Wow. But the weather was actually the weather was amazing. And I love Vegas, dude. Vegas was a lot of fun. I'm ready to go back. That's not how the song goes. The song is I love L.A., not I love Las Vegas. But OK. I mean, wait, wait, way to change copyright. V Viva Las Vegas, baby. Hey, that works too. That that works too. Yeah, I mean, hey, that, I'm good for you. So, what did you come home and tell the Mrs. Law we need to move to Las Vegas? She shut that uh, down. I mean, she's, quick, she's she? probably not down to a move to to Las Vegas, but no. you, you know, if if the company office is put there, then you know, it's I'm gonna have to find an airline and get like an airline credit card or or something. That's that's gonna have to be the it's gonna have to be the play. She doesn't want little little mini Jefferson legal start learning how to throw craps and like like um head start or whatnot <laughs> sitting there with dice too big for his little his little ham hocks. I'm like, mm. <laughs> uh, and Courtney was out there with y'all too. So you know, you guys and um I, Chad I, Chad I are out there see, acting out Courtney in real life, IRL yeah. in the flesh. Courtney at Courtney actually exists, she's not she just she, she's she's not just a robot at the other end of the computer. Exactly. She's actually a real person. I don't know. Did you did you cut her arm and make sure that she bled normal people blood? No, I, I you know I wasn't gonna go that far, but you no, know I'm enough. a pretty trustworthy. I'm a trusting person, so you know I mm, believe her. Yep, yeah, and you know what? That's how the Matrix ended up happening too. It's true. I mean, you know, I actually watched that last night. The Matrix. I have, I have, yeah, I have friends that have never seen the Matrix series before. Wow. So we're we're watching the. Uh, all three Matrix, so that way when the fourth one comes out, we can all go see the fourth one. You got to watch the Animatrix too, dude. What are you talking about? I mean, I've watched the Animatrix, but when they, I told them you about the watch when I told them about the Animatrix, they're like, "I don't know, dude. We're not really into that type of stuff." And I'm like, "You've got to watch if you want to watch the whole story. If you want to know the whole story, you got to watch the Animatrix because it is a big part of the story." I was talking to my son about this last night. He goes, "I haven't watched the Matrix and I haven't watched the Crow. I want to watch those with you." And I'm like. Oh, don't worry. Your dad got you. Yeah. And it's it's been a while since I've watched them too. So it's a it's a nice refresher. It's nice to revisit. Yeah. Nice refresher. And last movie thing, real quickly, also excited. I saw this a little bit before we started. Dune 2 got green lit. Nice. We're good, baby. I haven't watched the first one yet. I'm just kind of I'm just kind of like hanging back for a few minutes because it's beautiful. It's like I do want to watch it, but the issue that I had is I was trying to because I don't really read books anymore. I do mm -hmm. audio books now. And um, it was just kind of hard to get through the audio book. Like, it's not that the audio book is bad. The audio book is really good. It's just, it's kind of like, it's along the lines of going through a Tolkien book, 
without the without all the stupid songs if that makes yeah. sense there's just so yeah. much detail and sometimes that much exposition just sort of gets in the way of the story yeah so. uh, although I, I i will say comparing books i don't think herbert or uh, herbert goes as far as uh nowhere near nowhere near as, as, no, as, nowhere near as far as tolkien does nowhere yeah, near Tol as far. tolkien will spend five minutes to like five pages describing the bush yeah. a bush a random bush he said the bush <laughs> <laughs> reggie or the body part reggie okay he should his he should get he should get his uh heisman back hashtag give reggie his heisman back his muscles glistened under the night sky <laughs> Uh, but no, he, he doesn't go that far, but it's still just so much. It's like he really just shoves so much history in like one story. But I'm going to watch it because I, I love anything Jason Momoa is in. I'm there for. Anyway, before we get too deep into this, because this is a sports show, I am supposed to be talking sports. Before we get too deep in, I want to let you guys know, make sure you check out our partner, Monkey Knife Fight. Go to monkeyknifefight.com. And if it's your first time signing up with them, use our promo code VENDETTA and you'll get a 100% instant match on your first deposit up to $100. And it is next to impossible to lose. You just got to be smart enough hey, about it. Hey, let, let, take it take it from me. I got to use Monkey Knife Fight while I was out in Vegas. Oh, you did? I, yeah, I, I, I ended my less than a week there. I put... Uh, bets on two nights of NBA games while I was there. Um, ended up 60 bucks ahead from where nice. I started. So there you go. There you go. Big dubs. Big dubs. Awesome. So make sure you go to Monkey Knife Fight. Go to monkeyknifefight.com or you can download their app at your Google or I or Apple store. Monkey Knife Fight. Use our promo code Vendetta on your first deposit to get a 100% instant match on any of your deposits as long as it's the first one up to one hundred dollars all right let's go into some uh nfl news first and foremost um we'll we'll go over your what's going on with your um your hapless dolphins in a bit i don't that want to just, okay fine, i know we have to, to but i don't want to yeah that that was just horrible that was just horrible but mike tomlin has rejected the rumors that he's going to be up to the USC job saying, quote, it's a joke to me. So today during his weekly press conference, it was brought up what Carson Palmer had to say on the Dan Patrick show, where he was basically saying that uh, Mike Tomlin was up for that USC job if he wanted it. And this is what Mike Tomlin said today during his press conference here in Pittsburgh. He said, quote, I don't have time for that speculation. That's a joke to me. I got one of the best jobs in all the professional sports. Why would I have any interest in coaching college football? That'll be the last time I address it. And not only today, but moving forward. Never say never, but never. Okay. There's not a booster with a big enough blank check. Who? Mike Tomlin just said, F you, SoCal. I mean, he's right. He does have one of the better jobs. He's. I think I saw a stat. It's what it's what seventeen winning seasons in a row for for uh, the the Steelers, and so however many years Tomlin has been a part of that, he's had a winning season. He's, yeah, he's had just. I think he came in as his first season was in two thousand and seven, and he has not had a losing season in fifteen years, fourteen fifteen yeah, years. Which granted, he 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 inherited a great roster, but he kept it together. Has it won together. a Super Bowl, um, and has they've stayed the Steelers have stayed competitive the whole time. And in, you know, I, I, I like it. Like I, like I said, I think he does have one of the better gigs. It's, it's rare these days for coaches to stay as long as Tomlin has in the NFL at one job. You yeah, really you just got him and him and Belichick are like the longest tenured coaches him, Belichick in, and then Harbaugh in, right. uh, in Baltimore, which in that order, yeah, and which ironically enough, uh, Tomlin and Harbaugh same division too. Yeah, so, you know you exactly. Got, um, but yeah, you just don't see it anymore. And you know, I'm I personally because I like the NFL, I I like Tomlin to stay. I don't want to see him go out for the USC job. I think there's a ton of other coaches that would be just as suitable as Tomlin would be. 
But Tomlin's been away from the college game for for so long that would he even be able to like start a uh, like a uh, um, like a recruiting get a program started, sphere, yeah. get the program going, reach out to recruits? He just I just don't know if he has those type of relationships because I don't think he's been looking to go to college and I don't think he he cares to. Well, and, but and, I, and, and, and and not only that, but I I feel like his way works better for professionals than it does for the college game. Yeah, but at the same token, I think that I mean, don't you think that it would be easier to transition from pro to college instead of college to pro though? Because it would. if you're if because you, if you're successful in the NFL like Tomlin is, Belichick is, or Harbaugh are is, let's use those three names. If you go to a program. That's instant credibility right there, is it not? Like, it's just like, look, I'm me. You want to yeah. play for me. Yeah, but, I mean, in, in Tomlin's instance, I feel like he carries more weight in the NFL than he does in college. You go down to college, um, like, it doesn't matter if you're, if you're, you know, coaching a team in Southern California. Nick Saban is going to still get all the top recruits. You're going to have to yeah. go through at least two teams from the SEC every year. Kirby Smart has put together a squad this year at Georgia. And I just I just don't see him having the success that USC thinks that USC should have. The, right. the success that they haven't had in, in decades since, you know, we talked about Reggie Bush, Reggie Bush. <laughs> earlier. But since, since Reggie Bush and Matt Leinart were paired up together and uh, played uh, Vince Young from back when he was in Texas. Mm. That type of success, getting to those massive bowl games, getting to championships, making the playoffs. I just don't, I just, I, I don't, I don't know. I still feel like in my gut that Urban Meyer still might be attached to it, even though there's just, there's so many names and it, it's, it's almost like the USC job. It's like the New York Knicks of the NBA uh, of college football. It's every uh, Mo Dick and Harry that's involved in coaching is like, could be up for the USC job. Like uh, Arkansas's coach, Sam Pittman was like, talk was like talked about in rumors is like, Oh, he could be, you know, offered this job. And, you know, is like, um, Oh crap. What's his name? Uh, Jimbo Fisher has been tied to LSU and to the USC job. I've saw seen reports for that. So, right. So, I mean, I, I get you there. I mean, that, that that makes sense. I just, I love the fact, though, that, um, and, and you're right, I, I don't see Mike Tomlin going anywhere. I really don't. He, he's got a good gig here. Basically, the, 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 the Pittsburgh job is his for as long as he wants it. Like, he'd have to go through, like, five horrible losing seasons. And I mean five terrible yeah. losing seasons. Like, if, if he won, like, 11 games in those five years, then... You got to call something yeah. into question. If he start, if he starts doing what Flores is doing this year, multiple years, or what Adam Gase did, basically, if the Steelers turn into the Jets, the Jaguars, the Dolphins, the Lions, or the Washington Football Team, then his job could be in jeopardy. All right, let, let's move on here. The Jets, the New York Football Jets. I don't know why I say that. Well, because you know you've got the Winnipeg Jets, but anyway have acquired Joe Flacco in a trade with the Philadelphia Eagles. So the Jets are getting Flacco, um, and they've sent Philly a 2022 six-round pick that could become a fifth-rounder based on playing time from a, from um, Joe Flacco. I almost called him Falco. Hmm? So it's looking Falco like – yeah. So Zach Wilson's going to be missing at least two weeks with a PCL strain. And um, Mike White, of course, came in – made his NFL debut after um, Zach Wilson went down during the Jets 54 to 13 shellacking against the Patriots on Sunday mm-hmm. Threw for 202 yards, a touchdown and two picks. I don't know. I mean, what do you think? Do you think having an infusion of a veteran leadership is going to help this Eagles? I mean, not Eagles, this Jets team. No, no, it's still the it's, Jets. It's, it's like, it's like you've got a hole in the ship. That's this wide. Or like this, like this big, and you just put a little band aid over it and said it's fixed. Right. Hey, ah, it's look at hunk. that. The the big the mogul, the the mogul machine. Trey Dobbert coming up in here doing some um making his appearance. Man's been to like 
a dozen Golden Knights games in Vegas wow. already. Wow. Not that many, but I mean, he's been to a lot. He's he's been to more hockey games than what I've been to, which no, is none, so that's not hard. Fair enough. I haven't been to a hockey game in like a long time, to be honest, at least 20 years. But, you know, I, I think you're absolutely right. I think Joe Flacco is just, you know, he's going there. He'll probably, honestly, if I'm Joe Flacco, I want zero playing time. And I mean zero because I'm not getting, I'm not getting killed. You're at the end of your career. At this point, you're just paycheck collecting at this point. That's you kind know, of he, what he's done ever since he's won a Super Bowl. Yeah. Oh, wow. So Trey is Sauce still dude. out there. He's Taking still out there in Vegas. He's still out yeah. there. Still out there. Okay, Final day okay. is tomorrow. All right. Then he's got to come back to the East Coast where the where the where the weather is not being as forgiving. No, it's start it is starting to get cold everywhere. Starting. I finally got my pellet burning stove installed on Saturday and I ran it. I ran it Sunday. I ran it yesterday, and I'm running it today. The downstairs is nice and comfortable. Up here, it's like, <laughs> I mean, but no, I think you're absolutely right. When you're Joe Flacco, you've already got your Super Bowl ring. You've got your credentials. You don't need. You got nothing else to prove. Is Joe Flacco a Hall of Famer? No. He might get it. He he might he might squeak in, but I doubt it. But at the same time, you've made your money. You've got your ring. You pretty much have a job as an as an analyst. Or as a coach, whatever you want to do. I think at this point, he's just going in just so he can keep making that little extra bit of money. Jets ain't going nowhere with them. At this point, they're probably going to end up getting another like top five quarterback pick in next year's draft. And then his career is going to go. And the cycle just continues. Yeah. All right. So yeah. Max Murphy, Max Murphy did a um he, he had come out with a great article up here on vendetta sportsmedia.com. Make sure you go over and check it out. The 2021 NFL Week 7 Biggest Storylines and Takeaways, according to Max Murphy. Let's go through this real quick. John Gruden resigning was the best thing for the Las Vegas, Oakland, slash L.A. Raiders. Two weeks without Gruden, two wins for the Raiders. And they're playing free and loose style of football under Coach Bisakia. I guess that's how you say his name. You know, no anxiety on the sideline. Everything's going good. Josh Jacobs is a happy man. Um, so what do you think? You think, I think John Gruden being gone is best as well. Cause if you keep him on that team with the things that he said, the things that kept coming out, you're going to get a lot of issues and that team is not going to concentrate. So him being gone is the best thing to happen to this team in a long time. He, and let's be frank, J law, this team wasn't, it was sort of hit or miss even with him there. They were never all on the same page. Yeah, they they had a hot start and then they kind of stalled a mm -hmm. little bit. Um, and in John Gruden's way of coaching, like you know, obviously I'm all for you know if coaches want to you know be a little hard on their players sometimes because they're professionals, they demand the best out of them and stuff like that. Um, but I, I just don't think that Gruden's thinking, both in in football and societal thinking had caught mm -hmm. up to 2021 so um it was probably like I, honestly i i felt like gruden probably should have been gone after last year i mean before emails came out let's disregard emails just talk about mm -hmm. football it, it, it was just been a disappointment ever since he came back and they gave him a massive fully guaranteed like 10 year contract or something like that to come back and coach it's like it was completely unheard of for mm -hmm. that for that to happen and what they did and it was just disappointment after disappointment but mm -hmm. i mean they started off hot this year and they started you know, like, like, Josh bit, and said, like people are a bit more relaxed you know he said there's not someone screaming and cussing you out after every little thing and it's it seems to you know the the raiders seem to be settling in and who knows maybe maybe this guy I'm gonna be. I'm gonna keep it a buck. I'm gonna be honest. I had no idea who this guy was when he took over, Man. but he seems to be doing an okay job. He's got. Hey. He's two and zero as a head coach. There so, you go. If, and if it ain't broke, don't fix don't it. Fix if they it. like him and and they're continuing to win and they're com competitive in a division where the Broncos are the Broncos and the Chiefs have fallen off massively, have no idea what's happening there. So now for the division, it's you and the Chargers. 
and you're Derek Carr. You have Derek Carr, who's a former uh, played at an MVP level at one year, and it's a second year quarterback in Justin Herbert and a rookie head coach. I like your chances. I, I agree. Like my chances. I agree. And Derek Carr is he's he's a good he's a good um, signal caller. I watched him very very closely in that game against the Steelers earlier this year, and he's good. He's real good. I don't care what anyone says. He's under he is underrated. He's under he really is he really is. Joe Burrow and the Bengals are the number one team in the AFC North. Who would have thought this would happen? It really makes that Steelers loss to Cincinnati not feel as bad. No. To be honest, especially as they they went right into Baltimore and whooped and we're going to go over the scores a little bit later on in the show they walked into baltimore got the job done and left hey and this is why i mean and and um double m says it best this is why the nfl's king because you've got a team that's literally at this point in time gone worse to first now granted we're only at the mid only right about at the mid, not even at the midway point yet but Hey, they're proving it. They're doing it. They're they're they are playing extremely well. And Jamar Chase is having a historic rookie year for receiver. Like he, like I know there was a lot of talk about Najee Harris being the offensive rookie of the year for the AFC. I think it's right now the edge has to go to Jamar Chase. The way that he is absolutely exploding. Joe Burrow has taken a massive massive leap which is insane considering that a lot of quarterbacks you see have a have a bit of a sophomore slump because the rookie season they step in teams don't know too much what to expect from them so they find a little bit of success because there's just that wild card factor then that second mm -hmm. year they got them a bit more figured out so now um the rubber's hitting the road and the quarterback and you like this is where you find out if your quarterback's good or not if they can make adjustments and the, make that leap from year one to year two he has done that, and he has done that coming off a significant leg injury. Right. This this yeah. team is playing phenomenally, and and I want to I want to know how do you feel about this? I, like, are the Bengal? Do you hate the Bengals least of the other two teams in the AFC North? Because I I know you don't care much for the Ravens because I hate obviously the they've had success. I hate and the Ravens. We'll see. No, I hate the Ravens. Not, not because of success. I hate the Ravens because they're the old Cleveland Browns. That's mm -hmm. why I hate the Ravens. And there's just something about that team that just gets under my skin. <laughs> the, the, the Browns of now, I dislike because they're in Cleveland. Cincinnati, I mean, honestly, even with like the only time I started really hating Cincinnati was when they were starting to get good with Carson Palmer and they were like stomping on the terrible towel and just acting stupid. Cause it's like, look, y'all, y'all been bottom of the heap for so long. You start to do something and you think you all that. No, yeah. no, 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 and, no. And in that, that same era too, they really had a bad reputation of, of being dirty players of oh, having absolutely. some of the most dirty players, like cheap shots. Um, there's one I remember on Antonio Brown that's, is probably the hit that sent him into his well. This, spiral this, I'm talking insanity. even before, and I'm talking even before mm -hmm. the Vontez Perfect era. I'm talking even before that. I'm yeah. talking with TJ Hushmanzada, aka TJ Hujamama, aka TJ. Not even in the league. No one even knows who you are anymore. Forgot about TJ and, Hushmanzada and Chad Johnson, who just got on my nerves. Ocho Cinco. Mm -hmm. Ocho, kiss mine. You know, but I'm honestly, I don't dislike these Bengals because I don't dislike, um, you know, Joe, Joe Burrow. I like that kid. He, he's he's on point. You know, I mean, they're they're I was I'm they're a division rival in the fact that they play in the same division, but I don't. I think I like I hate them least <laughs> of the other two teams. Okay, that's what I was curious about. Yeah. So, Dan Campbell. And his, this is the best 0 and 17. The ever. dude was playing Madden out there this past week. Yo, these I guys, and I love how Max even puts in there in this story that except for that Bengals game, the Lions have been in every single game that they've played in. Be careful of these guys because these guys could be pretty they, good next year. It is, it is funny. They are, if the, they keep that intensity. 
They they are the worst Owens or the best Owen seven team. It's it's insane. They have kept a lot of games close. I'm sure um, they might have the best record against the spread in the NFL. I, I I would need to go back and look at the scores and what the spreads were for every game that they've played. But it feels like it's always come down to a possession, maybe two. And I feel like every team has been favored by like a dozen points or more against them. So they, they, there's the potential that you could bet on the lions and, and still cover. I agree a hundred percent. You said it but, best. Like, well, you know what? This, this lion's team has actually inspired me. You know how I said that I'll pop in man 20 when I'm doing schoolwork and I have to take mm-hmm. a break to just sort of settle my brain down. I'm doing, I'm a head coach and I'm using the lions. You know, the, the, the lions are, the lions are a fun team. Let, let, let's, let's finish through this real quick. Cause we're almost up against the, uh, yeah. the first break. San Francisco's gone from started two and oh, now they're two and four. They're just they're falling apart. They're 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 definitely falling apart. Now, the crazy thing is when Trey Lance is healthy, Jimmy G is Jimmy G's out. He's out the door, I think, with him playing as mediocre Mm -hmm. and less as he has been. Once Trey Lance is back, that's his job. I agree. They they drafted Trey Lance for a reason. And in a season like this, you might as well go ahead and just trot out Trey Lance, get him the experience. Um, and all I care about right now is that they keep throwing it to Debo Samuel because he's he's on my fantasy team. And he he continues to get me like 20 points a week because he's getting a lot of catches, getting a lot of targets, and he's catching touchdowns. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm also appreciative that they are sucking right now. Because Miami gave up their own pick, which is like the number two or number three pick right now to the Eagles. But Miami also has San Francisco's pick. So it looks like it could be a top 10 pick as well. So it's not going to be as good, but, you know, it could have been a lot worse <laughs> is what I'm saying. And it, and it still could. The, the 49ers could figure it out. And Trey Lance comes back and wins a couple of games late, late in the season and, and ruins the party. But... It's honestly a surprise to see them suck this bad. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting this division to be uh, a bit more a competitive. Bit better. Which, but, yeah, you know, now you've got the now injuries the to, to them, uh, to, to Seattle to, and, and Seattle. Yeah. Um, yeah. So now, now it's a two team. Now it's a two team division. It's uh, the Cardinals and it's the Rams. And they're both very good. They're they very good. Really, I can't wait. I can't really wait for their good. next game. I can't wait oh, to their no. next game. Me, me too. Broncos. I think they're, they're they're feeling the sting of not picking a quarterback. Teddy Bridgewater had the Broncos at a three and zero start, and they've just dropped their fourth straight, losing to mm-hmm. an injury plagued Browns team. The fact that they could have had Case um, Keenum just, led, <laughs> yeah, Case Keenum led <laughs> Cleveland Browns. Um, and Max makes a good point here. If I'm if I'm John Elway and the uh, the Broncos, I'm getting into that Deshaun Watson Watson sweepstakes. Yeah, and we'll get I'm sure we'll get to that later yeah, because we, we have will. to talk we have to talk about my poverty franchise. Um yeah. because it's just it's it's inevitable. Um I you know what I'll save I'll save what I have to say for that. Yeah, let's save Cause that because we're we're it, yeah, because we're really, really, we're, really up against it. Time is about yeah, up. So, so let's go can, through these real quick. Titans embarrass the Chiefs 27 to 3. Is this the end of the Chiefs dynasty? I think so. I, 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 when, I don't think that it's the end, but I think that a lot of work needs to be done. And I think the fact that they've been ignoring this defense for the last couple of years, you got to start. I mean, I, I, I see the Chiefs limping into the playoffs because they're still the Chiefs, but this defense is just proven more and more. It's it's a liability. And when the defense isn't working, if the op, the defense needs to be able to step up and the offense is having a tough time. Yeah, I I think they bounce back against the Giants. But then they get the Packers and the Raiders right after mm-hmm. that. Yeah. That could be tough. It, it, well, actually, it goes Packers, Raiders, and then Cowboys. Yeah. The Cowboys haven't played well. Then Broncos because of division. And then Raiders again. And then they finish Chargers, Steelers, Bengals, Broncos. Yep. It is going to be tough. Like you said, if they get in, they are limping, and they are the last team in. Yep. All right. You know what? I'm going to, we're, we're going to, we're going to, you know what? I'm going to take it easy on you. When we come back from this break, we're going to skip over this week, seven scores 
and we're going to go to our week eight predictions. We're going to get through those and we're going to get to, cause we've got MLB to talk and we've got um, your sport. We got basketball to talk. NBA is back. The new season's going on. A lot of drama already. Some uh, disrespect on uh, LeBron's way, Anthony Davis and Dwight Howard getting into it. And um, I want to, I'm, there's just a lot going on. And also this is something that was brought up in our Slack and I kind of want to throw my two cents in on it. I don't want to get political, but I feel the need to talk about, um, you know, what the state of Texas is looking to do with it, with, mm-hmm. you know, their own form of a transgender ban, but we'll have time on that. We'll be back here on the Tandemonium Sports Show, a proud part of the Vendetta Sports Media Podcasting Network, broadcasting live here on Twitch TV. We'll be right back. The following is brought to you in partnership by Symbol. Symbol is a new sports marketplace where you can trade shares of professional teams like stocks. You love sports. You interested in fantasy sports without the weekly annoyance of fantasy league upkeep? Then Symbol's the app for you. With Symbol, fantasy sports is going to a whole other level. How it works is simple. You buy Symbol shares for your favorite Sim teams on the app. When your Sim team wins, you get automatic cash deposits and you don't lose any money when they lose. That's it. So if you follow trends across football, basketball, and baseball, and you think your team is a sleeper, simply invest in your favorite sim teams on Symbol and watch your virtual portfolio prove you right or wrong. And if you want to get in on the action right away, Vendetta Sports Media's got you covered. Go to symbol.app forward slash Vendetta and use our exclusive promo code Vendetta and you'll get a $10 bonus when making your first deposit. Symbol. Taking fantasy sports to a whole other level. All right, we're back here on the Tandem Money Sports Show, broadcasting live on Twitch TV. If you're listening to us either via audio only on the podcast side of things, you can check us out live every Tuesday night, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, twitch.tv forward slash Vendetta Sports Media. Make sure you also check out all of Vendetta's social media. Just search Vendetta Sports Media. You can find us on Facebook. What's that other one? Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, (laughs) TikTok, and what's that? Oh, and YouTube. Blah. So many things. So many things that we're on. We're on too many things. So many things. So many things. And if you want to follow the Tandemonium Sports Show, you can follow us exclusively on Twitter. Tandemonium at Tandemonium VSM, where I will, I live tweet Every single Steeler game all throughout the season. All right, real quick, J-Law, let's go through the week eight schedule. You know what? We weren't doing anything for uh, week seven. So, you know, week seven happened. We're over it. We're done with it. I want to get some other things. So real quick, let's do our predictions for week eight. And, you know, we'll get that out of the way. That sound good to you? Sounds good. All right, let's get through this. Let's get through it quick. Packers, Cardinals. Cardinals, the last unbeaten team, they are playing lights out, playing the pack at home. I've got the Cardinals running away with this one. I got, I like the flying Cardinals away. I should say flying away. Yeah, the birds. <laughs> I like, I like the Cardinals in this one. I don't think they go undefeated. I think they lose at some point. Oh but yeah, the they're, line, they're, right, they're, the, the line right now is at six and a half. I think it's closer than that. So. If I was a betting man, I'd probably pick the Packers to cover the spread. But well, you've been doing some betting, so why yeah. don't you? I mean, I'm trying to look well, at I'm, their. I'm back in Arkansas now, so I can't do betting. Yeah, that's a good point. I gotta find me a bookie. I'm trying to find their um ske- the, the Cardinal schedule, but I'm not looking into it. Courtney, maybe if you can pull up the uh, the Cardinals up the the rest of their schedule for this year, we can maybe play toward the end of the show. Who's the um Cardinals' first loss going to be to? Bengals, Jets, we all know the Bengals are going to win that game. Unless Joe Burrow, like, his leg falls off and Jamar Chase loses a hand and, like, the entire defense comes down with COVID, there's no way the Jets are going to win this game at all. No. So moving on to a much more interesting game, Titans, Colts. I mean, the Colts seem to be like they're they're kind of looking to get it together. Titans, just beat the crap out of the defending a- um, AFC champions. Ah, th- this this 
I might I might have to give it to the team with a hot hand. The Titans are going to be riding high. The fact that they knocked Patrick Mahomes around. So I'm going to give this to the yeah. Titans, J Law. The Titans have had two really good wins in a row. They remember beat them. the Buffalo, remember they them. beat the Buffalo Bills, and then they beat the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, which right now, the way the Chiefs are playing, that may not look as impressive of a win in a few a few weeks from now. Um, but the the Colts have seemed to really, you know, get things together after having a terrible start. Carson Wentz is starting to play a lot better. Um, I, I feel like this this game could potentially decide the division. Colts go four and four; they're just a game behind. Um, but if they lose this game, then they're in a they're in a massive hole. Um, <laughs> so I just Dig that hole. I, I I don't know. I don't. No, the key is just to stop Derrick Henry. If, if they can not even stop him, if they can slow down Derrick Henry to less than 130 yards, the Colts have a chance. Fair enough. All right, real quick, I want to go through the remaining. Now, we've already picked the Cardinals to, to beat the uh, Packers. I just want win or loss when I give you the, these names for these teams. Gotcha. You ready? Ready. Week nine, San Francisco at the San Francisco 49ers. Win. For I'm calling win. Win for the Cardinals. Oh, win. Yeah, okay. All right. Week 10, home against Carolina. I'm calling that a win for the Cardinals. That's a win. All right. Week 11 in Seattle. I think I'm it's a giving, win. I'm giving that a win as well. Week Even 12 if Russ is, a is back. It's, they're just too I'm giving that a win. Much better. Yep. Um, week 12 is a bye. Week 13, going into Soldier Field. I'm giving them the win against the Bears. Yeah. Week 14, Monday night game against Los Angeles. I think this is the loss. I think this week 14 matchup is the loss. I agree. Okay. Week 15, Detroit Lions. I think this is a very close win for um, the cards. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. Win for cards. All right. Indianapolis, uh, Christmas Day. I'm giving this one to the Cardinals as well against the Colts. Colts are at home. Colts playing. They'll be playing the Colts in Indianapolis. See, that's a decent matchup, though. I'm gonna be bold. I'm gonna go with Colts on that one. All I'm right. Lost. So that so so right now we've got a two game lose. We got two games lost so far this season. All right. Week after that, day after New Year's Day, going into Texas to play the Cowboys into the Dallas. I'm. Mm. Now, this is a game I think that the Cowboys could eke out. Yeah, I'm going to go win there, but I'm not going to be surprised if if it's flipped where it's a win against the Colts and a loss against the Cowboys. Fair enough. I think that, that could be the second loss. But I, right, I, so I'm going to I'm going to stick with my guns. I'm going to stick with my Carson Wentz. All right, so boy. you had so you had the losing to the Colts and winning against the Cowboys. So we both have I think them that, two I think, losses. I think they have a bad game against the Colts. Bounce back against a great uh, or a good team in which they've been playing great. So against right. against a good and, team in the Cowboys, and then their throwaway game week eighteen against the Seahawks at home. I still give this a win. Yeah, I think the only thing that would could make it a loss is if they've got like the one seed locked up and they're not undefeated. Then they, they could just pull their care. starters. They could pull yeah. Kyler, Hopkins, Watt, um, other starters. Just play backups. Or maybe play them like a quarter or a half just to stay in rhythm, just to stay up to speed. And then they pull their starters and then they could potentially lose that game. But again, that's only yeah. if that's only if they've got the one seed, if they've got the division locked up, they got the one seed and the NFC locked up, which it looks like they may. Um, and again, as, lo as long as they've lost at least a game up to that point. Right. Because right. if you lose a game, then what, you, what really are you playing for after that? You're not going to go undefeated. So just rest your starters and try to make a Super Bowl run. Right. All right. So moving on to um, week eight, um, Rams are going to absolutely obliterate the Texans. So why even talk about it? Rams win, Rams win, Rams yep. win. Yep. Steelers Browns. This is going to be a good game to watch. The Browns are pretty injury plagued. The Steelers, they, they have a lot to work on too, though. So um, yeah, with the way this season is gone, to be honest, as much as it pains me, I'm going to have to give the edge to the Cleveland um, toilets. 
The Dukies yeah, win. It, it all the Dukies depends win. If Mayfield, not it's not necessarily if Mayfield is back. I think Kareem Hunt is still on IR. I Nick don't know. Nick about Chubb, Chubb is hurt. Though. I'd have I think to look Chubb up is about still, I think Chubb is still hurt. Chubb and Hunt still may be on IR. Um, that offensive line obviously is still good enough. I think if I think if Baker comes back, like I'm not the biggest Baker fan, like as a player, I like him as a person. I love his energy and I, I love the way he carries himself <laughs> and sticks it to uh, Colin Coward all the time. Uh, but yeah, Colin, I think if Mayfield Colin Coward back, is that... a, Colin Coward is a herpes sore. <laughs> Um, so, but yeah, so I'm, we, I'm we both in agreement. The, Brown, Browns yeah, I get the edge of the Browns if if Mayfield's back. All right, the battle of the hapless Eagles, Lions. I actually, you know what? I'm going to give this one to the Lions. They've been fighting really, really hard. The Eagles are, the Eagles just are just the, Dan, they're, flattered, the, they're flattered. They're flattered in a deflated freaking breast implant. Yeah, uh, Dan Campbell is going to snort a little bit of extra cocaine this week and push the cocaine. Lions over. This is this is it. This is it. <laughs> this is this is this is their Super Bowl. He, Fair enough. Listen, they they got to win. He he is crying in press conferences. They've got to do something for their for their coach. Fair enough. Battle the hapless bowl two Niners Bears. I give this one to the Bears. As long as you got Khalil Mack on your defense, you've got you've got a chance. As far as I'm concerned, I think this is a game where um, where Justin Fields is able to really showcase what he can do. I think he's going to beat up on this 49ers defense. This is I give this one to game. the Bears. This is an absolutely gross game. I like the Eagles this- and Lions game better than this game. <laughs> um. It's nowhere near as bad as whatever game your um, Dolphins are playing in. I mean, it's a dub for the other team, at least. There's, a, there's always a clear favorite in that one. Yeah, but uh, we're talking about this one right now. Who do you and got? we're talking about this one right now, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I I honestly can't say yay or nay either way. I I, I just don't know. If I, was, if I was doing a full slate of bets, I would just pass on this game. Fair enough. Panthers, Falcons, man. The Fal- talk about a, a, another team that's fallen from grace, man. Sam Darnold actually had to get benched. He got was benched. So he abysmal. got benched for PJ Washington this past. That week. was just abysmal. That's and the Falcons, honestly, I'm I'm gonna pick the Falcons on this one. How can what you do, they do this to, to me, Sam? I defended you, dude. And we have been. Def- this show has been it defending good, you. and then you just you put up the last this three weeks whole and then you benched show. for a dude that was playing in the XFL. Before Dude, this collapsed. whole show, this whole show has been backing you up. You let us down. Falcons are going to pull this one out. I think I'm giving this one to the Falcons. I still got to go with my boy Sammy. Please Fair have enough. a bounce back game. So next one, your Dolphins already going to lose. So we're going to move. I don't want to talk about it. Let's just keep going. Yep. Pats Chargers. Pats after uh, beating the ever loving snot out of the uh, the, the Dolphins going to be going into LA to play a real team in the Chargers. I, I give this say. one to I give this one to the Chargers. I think the Chargers are going to kick the Dolphins in the face and then when they're laying there twitching from the pain, they're just going to spike the ball in their nuts. I give this one to the Chargers. That is exactly what is going to happen. All right. Seahawks Jaguars, I think Geno Smith takes all of this frustration out on the Jaguars. The Jaguars get snapped back to reality. Oh, there goes gravity. Up. Oh, you lost again. Hey, I hope so. I hope he. I hope he takes his rage by throwing uh, twelve or thirteen times to DK Metcalf. He only DK Metcalf only had two receptions last night, but thankfully one of them was an eighty-four yard touchdown that won me my fantasy game <laughs> last nice. night. So I'm a listen. I'm appreciative of Gino for that, but it's one of those situations where it's like it's like Gino. I appreciate what you've done for me, but I need more. Okay. I, yeah. I, I need more decaf, more targets. Okay. Mm. Move the ball, get it in the end zone. And listen, you got four chances to get it to the end zone. I, all four of those plays better be pass plays and they all better be to DK. Okay. And it's listen, it's not like you have to, you don't have to try that hard. Just see where he's at. Just see the matchup and just toss it up. He's going to go get it. Kind of like what Matt Stafford was able to do when um, he had Megatron. Just throw the ball exactly. up. He'll just, catch throw it. The, just throw the ball up and let him go get it. Yep. Hap, hapless thing, bowl three funny Sorry, thing bro. real quickly though 
yeah. I saw someone the other day on Twitter. They have because Cooper Cup is having such an amazing season with the Lions, and because he's playing with Stafford, someone nicknamed him Vanillatron. Vanillatron. You mean um, Jared Goff? You mean Jared Goff? Stafford's out in L.A. No, no, no. I was saying the Cooper Cup. He's he's with the. Uh, the, oh, the, I thought you. Well, you said he was in Detroit. Rams. You said he no, was no, in Detroit. No, no, I said he's with. The, I said he's with the Rams. Oh, and he's like playing with. He's, and he's playing with Stafford. Detroit. Oh, yeah. So. The, the the Vanillatron does work for him. I think. Yeah. Yeah. So hap, bowl, the another hapless bowl. Broncos, the nameless ones. I'm a Teddy Bridgewater guy, so I'm hoping for Bridgewater. But tonight on wings, yeah, who cares? Mm. <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm gonna go with the I'm gonna go with the ones that shall not be named. It's fair just, enough. Just because I I kind of like their defense a little bit a little bit better. Ch- Chase Young is about a badass. And believe it or not, like Tyler Hineke can Hineke! Actually be, can actually be a decent serviceable quarterback at some points. He fair really enough. he really wasn't last game, but you know it is what it is. Saints Bucks. You know what? I'm gonna go against what my brain is telling me. I'm gonna go with the Saints on this one. I'm gonna I'm gonna say Jameis Winston finally, you know, I'm, I'm gonna say Jameis Winston gets some payback mm-hmm. on his old team. And but the thing is, Sean Payton's got to let the guy play, man. He's got to let him throw yeah. the ball. I don't know, man. Tom Brady is playing out of his mind. The man's got 21 touchdowns right yeah. now. He's he's playing absolutely out of his mind. And I I honestly think because record wise, I think it's like him and Kyler right now are the front runners for the MVP along mm-hmm. with Derrick Henry. Like, I know the nickname for the MVP is the quarterback award, but you got to look at what Derrick Henry's doing. He's on pace for 2,200 yards this year. Yeah. Well, G- Giselle's man meat is doing really, really good. But like I said, there's just something about the Saints. I just want to go against my main thinking right now. Fair. So I'm going to say Saints. All right. Um, final sun- the Sunday night game, Cowboys-Vikings. I'm giving this to the Cowboys. The Vikings are just – how about them boys? Mm-hmm. We them boys. Get them. Yeah, Get it's em. the Cowboys. I mean, I hate. I, I just like Cowboys fans, but Cowboys win. Yeah. And then Chiefs Giants. I think the Chiefs rebound and um, put. Um, I, 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 that's all there is to it. If the if the Chiefs lose to the G Men, the season's over. Hundred percent. Brian is frozen on my screen. I don't know if if I'm frozen. He is. Okay. Yeah. So all right, I'm back. If if the Chiefs lose, you know what? It's because my take was going to be really, really hot. If the Chiefs <laughs> lose this game to the Giants, I think Andy Reid needs to be on the hot seat. For real, for real. I don't know if he's going to be on the hot seat, but Man, the season's over. Season that is wall, over. That wall, that walrus lose. looking mofo. If they lose to the hapless ass Giants, I know, but he's he's got a Super Bowl and he just went to a Super Bowl. He's been to two Super Bowls in a row. I if freaking Doug Peterson could string out his coaching tenure because he got a Super Bowl with the Eagles, mm. Andy Reid is going to be able to stretch out his a couple more years. Yeah, he's uh, he's got Patrick Mahomes. They just need well, to well he defense. he needs he needs to be on the hot seat because he hasn't done jack for this defense. But all right, moving on to the MLB World Series is set. Houston, Atlanta. <sighs> didn't think I didn't think that Atlanta was going to get this far with a lot of their big guns out. They still made it. This is what happens. This is why baseball is one of those games. Baseball and hockey are those games where you cannot worry about what's on paper. You know, yeah, you, was, you get hot, you get hot at the right time. You make it happen. Yeah, they they had a 3-1 lead uh, on the Dodgers. And just in my mind, I was like, oh, no, it's going to happen again. It's it's an Atlanta-based sports franchise. They are going to blow this somehow. But they, they didn't. And like you said, it's a surprise that they got there. They're down like their top two or three players yeah um, including they're Asuna. just they're just hot right now though and that's that's yeah. what baseball is if you're the hottest team then they're walking in here well see of, they're obviously not the fa- they're not the favorites the astros are going to be the obvious favorites yeah but this is going to be a, good, a really good fight yeah one thing i will say is i'm getting really tired of seeing people go oh this is a big f you to 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 manford because he took the all-star game from Atlanta, blah, blah, blah. Shut up. Just shut up. 
it's just a it's just a team that caught hot. It's that's literally all it is. It is no it, there's no way the Braves are like, oh no, the all-star game isn't gonna be number one, it wasn't in Atlanta, it was in a suburb of Atlanta. Let's be for real. <laughs> because their stadium isn't in Atlanta proper, it's in a suburb. Okay. Number one. Number two, the Braves, it because that happened, the Braves did not have a major league moment where they're ripping off clothes of a car, a nude cardboard cutout of Commissioner Manford, just be like, oh, we got to win this so we can go to World Series. No, it's like a, it's like in, it's uh, it in major league. Yeah, that's what I was no, saying. Every, it, it, every it win, they're like yeah. taking the taking yeah. strip of the clothing off. Yeah, that, 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 that was my reference. There's no way that's happening. So just stop. Okay, enough. Enough. Yeah, no, but it All is right. a great, the, it the, is a great the, story, though. It is. It, like, is. it is. It's a good you're, story. You're, I'll give them that because they're 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 they were the underdog coming in and they just kept it going. Yeah, and, and it's a great story. And I early do not in the want season, to impugn them. They lost Acuna, who was one of like one of the top favorites for being MVP. I know they've lost some other players that were vital, considered vital to this team, but somehow they've rallied around each other and they've made an amazing push. And, uh, you know, I saw some people comparing it uh, that it feels similar to the Nationals run that they made a few years ago uh, in, in winning the title. And maybe they they do it here. Yeah, maybe, I agree. maybe, maybe they do it. I don't know. A lot of my resentment toward the uh, Atlanta Braves is coming back as well from the early 90s. So we'll see. <laughs> All right, we're going to take our final break here on the Tandemonium Sports Show, part of the Vendetta Sports Media Podcasting Network, broadcasting live every Tuesday evening at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Twitch TV. Go to twitch.tv forward slash Vendetta Sports Media. We'll be right back with our final segment here on the Tandemonium Sports Show. The following broadcast is brought to you in association by XP Coffee Company. XP Coffee Company is the fresh brewed coffee made for gamers by gamers. Get amazing flavors like Choco Loco in 8, 12, or 16 ounce bags or level up and get illusion, isolation, nightmare, or the majestic throne blends in light, medium, or dark roast in whole bean, coarse French press, drip, or fine espresso in 12 ounce, 16 ounce, or two pound bags. Wow! Shipping worldwide. If you're in the U.S., go to usa.xpcoffee.co. If you're in Europe or in the U.K., Go to www.xpcoffee.co. XP Coffee Company for gamers by gamers. Speaking of gaming, Jackson Law, you've been playing on um, Back for Blood. I've played a little bit. Same uh, here. I've played a little. I, I want to play. Ton. I want to play more of it. I Same. haven't finished the first act. Neither yet. have I. Neither have I. But I like I, it. I, I it's fun. It. I'm it's fun. It. I enjoy it. it. It's a fun game. It's just I haven't had time. Yeah, same. And it's it's not on the level of Left 4 Dead. There's things that I think Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 did better. But there are things in here that I really like. There's some short-sighted decisions. Like the biggest one for me is when you get a new weapon, you can't take the attachments off. So you just you just lose those attachments. And yeah. then you don't you don't carry guns over between acts uh apparently i looked that up so like if you if you find the gun you like and you grind to find good like if you just get really lucky and you find good parts and you save up the copper that you get for the the store that's in every safe house and you get good attachments and you get it to where you want it when you start the next act you start with the base weapons that every uh character starts out with and which again sucks. it's 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 an idea uh, it like it it's the same thing that Left 4 Dead did. And that always, and like, I get that's what Left 4 Dead did, but it's like, this was like the uh, opportunity to like take Fix it a step that. further, you know? Yeah. If, if I, if I took the time to really like perfect my weapon the way I want it, I shouldn't lose it. Yeah. And I, I do like the card system that's, that's in there. I, I like the RNG factor where it's like no two levels are, you're going to play the same because you, you know, you have the corruption cards and mm -hmm. those always change stuff up so there's different challenges so that you can try to complete sometimes it throws like a massive boss in the middle of a level that you could have played that same level like a few days ago and there wasn't a boss there and all of a sudden there's a giant ogre and that's gonna like you know 
kick your kick your ass or something like that right. but or you know it's like the entire level's foggy so you can only see like two or three feet in front of you instead of like the regular like 30 40 50 feet right I, I, like the idea is there i think it's just with little today's thing. with today's like where they have advantages where you can uh, like you know update and make changes to the game during its life cycle where you as you really couldn't do that with left for dead back in the day mm -hmm. But you right. can now because 2021 never and these companies have a hard on for these um live service games. Well, see, I like the idea of because you know the game ever evolves. I hate games that like Cyberpunk. I'm real disappointed that like I haven't mm -hmm. gone back to that in a while. Like there's no replay. Neither, neither have I. I actually thought about that game the other day and I was I like, thought about it for like five seconds. And it's I was like, I was I was like, do I? And I'm like, not until there's mm -hmm. DLC. Yeah, At minimum, I'm, I'll consider I'm it. Depending on what the, the DLC same. is. Absolutely the same. All right, let's go into the NBA. Dwight Howard saying that he and Anthony Davis have no issues after the scuffle. Apparently, as they were walking off the court, was it last night? They were walking off the court. Uh, it was like during was, their second game. Yeah, I think. During, yeah. So a couple days ago, they, they, they were ha they walked off the court. They started arguing with each other. It was very visible. They started shoving each other, which yeah, got, got the teammates physical. to get between them. Basically, um, Anthony Davis said that it had something to do with a, quote, pick and roll scheme. They were upset about the play. They had that disagreement. They got into it, but now it's over and done with. I mean, honestly, there was a lot going on during the game, according to Courtney. I mean, yeah. do you think that – Yeah. I mean, is, there, is there trouble in paradise in L.A.? Is there way too much? Because now you've stacked this team like the Dod like you're the Dodgers, trying to buy yourself a championship so you can compete with – um, Giannis and other teams in the East. Is it is the 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 pressure to win already starting to get to be too much on them? Uh, I mean, I don't know if it's getting too much on them. Like, obviously, they're under a fine microscope because of who they are, where they're at, and what their expectations are. Um. And Courtney's right. There was a lot, a lot going on in that game. And I remember this. I remember this game now. Okay. It was, it was against the Phoenix Suns that they're playing because LeBron was jawing off to Cameron Payne of all people. <laughs> LeBron's getting wow. into altercations with Cameron Payne, yelling, you know, jawing at him from the bench. Rajon Rondo got a fan kicked out because I, I don't know what the fan was saying. It was probably just some normal fan banter. Rajon Rondo. Don't don't ban us for this Twitch, okay? Makes a gun with his finger and sticks it in the dude's face. You know, and he's like sticking it in his face. So the dude swipes Rondo's hand away. Dude gets kicked out for touching Rondo. Gets kicked out of the game. There was so much going on. And then of course Westbrook was being Westbrook that game. He was he was sucking. So there is a lot going on with the Lakers right now. Um, they unfortunately beat my Memphis Grizzlies in a, in a very heartbreaking way. John Morant missing a game tying free throw. It was unfortunate. He did go for 40 and 10 that night, 40, 40 points, 10 assists. First ever uh, Grizzlies player in franchise history to do that. Shout out, shout out to my boy, Ja, who's leading the NBA with 35 points a game right now. Very nice. D Rose and Iverson esque <laughs> brewing up, but um, I think they'll be okay. I don't expect them to win a championship this year. This year, I honestly have no idea who's winning a championship. It may be the Bucks again. The Bucks may go back to back. I have absolutely no clue from this first week. Normally, you can get like an idea, but when the Bulls are going four and zero, the Bucks have a great game against the Nets, and then have put up a stinker the next game, and the Nets are just playing, you know, KD save us offense. James Harden is scoring the least amount of points that he has scored since he was the sixth man in OKC. And the Lakers are like they got a pretty easy schedule coming up over the next to finish out this month and moving into November. And then the Clippers are still without Kawhi. I have absolutely no idea what to make it this first week. It is it is a weird first week. It just doesn't feel real. So I'm ready, like as as appreciative as I am that the NBA is back and that I promised myself I would never take sports for granted again like i did pre-pandemic so i am absorbing as every sports game that i possibly can even if it's a blowout i'm sitting there watching it i'm ready to get through the first month 
So that way I can get an idea of which way the season is headed. But after one week, got no idea, dude. Absolutely no idea. All right. So NBA also has announced a 75th anniversary team. I want to go through some of these names and I'm going to say agree or disagree. And I want to keep, I want to try to keep us, keep this relatively quick. All right. All right. Number one, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. If he's not on this list, it's in value. I mean, right off the top. Obvi- right off the do- Obviously. Ray Allen. Hmm. Uh, I guess so. I guess. I mean, he, he's he's a three-point king. So, obviously, I'll give him that because he is a three-point king. So, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I guess I can be okay with that. Uh, yeah. Giannis. I mean, he's he's the big name right now, and he is a genetic freak of nature. He just, you know, I mean, he's done, he's had back to back MVP seasons. Just became a Finals MVP. I can be okay with that. Yeah, I'm. I'd agree with that. You know, mm-hmm. seventy five years. You're looking at seventy five players. There's not seventy five players that have done what he's done. Mm-hmm. Uh, Defensive Player of the Year, um, Finals MVP. Uh, multiple regular season MVPs. Um, no one, no one like really as big as him because he's he's taller than Magic Johnson. No one as big as him has handled the ball like he does. And not only that, his jump shot is looking kind of smooth too. So the league just may be over <laughs> for the next 15, 20 years. For yeah, all I no, know, I agree. But I'm I'm cool with that. Here's my first. Here's my first bit of cont- contention here. Carmelo Anthony. I don't agree with that at all. I yeah, he's yeah. a good scorer, but you know what? He's not among the best of all time. I can think of a few people that I'd rather have on my team other than Carmelo Anthony. Right off the top yeah. of my head, to Kembe, to, right off the top of my head, to Kembe Mutombo, Bill Lambeer. Um, I'll even go with you know what? I would even take. Um, I'm trying to double check and make sure he's not on the list. Chris Mullen, because Chris Mullen was at a very effective score. And he was better on defense than Carmelo's been. I would even go with Tim Hardaway. I don't see Tim Hardaway on this list either. I mean, so I, I do. I do like. Part. I do like Melo. Um, I'd have to really look at like his accolades compared to someone uh, like a Tracy McGrady, who was left off the list. Grant Hill, who was left off the list. I'd, I'd really have to. See, I can understand. I can understand why Hill was left off the list because Grant Hill is the ultimate NBA. What could have been? But that's true. I'll give you that. That's true. I'll give you that. All right. So moving on, Nate Archibald. His his resume speaks for itself. Paul a reason. Charles Barkley, Rick Barry, Elgin yeah. Baylor, Dave Bing, Larry Bird, Kobe Bryant, Wilt Chamberlain, Bob Cousy, Dave Bob. Collins, Big Bob. Listen, there's a uh, couple of white dudes on here. Bob Cousy, whitest name of them all. Yeah, whitest of the white, Bob Beer Koozie, <laughs> uh, Billy Cunningham, <laughs> Steph Curry. Honestly, Steph Curry definitely like he he's earned his job. Yeah, Anthony he's, Davis. He's I changed the game. With. Anthony Davis. I, I disagree, I disagree with. with that too. I disagree with that too. I don't. Um, he's done a lot, but he ain't done enough, not, in my opinion. Yeah. That's a, that's a hard disagree. That's a hard disagree. Yeah, Dave De 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 Boucher. Clyde the Glide, Drexler, Tim Duncan, absolutely, Kevin Durant, 100%. Kevin Durant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess I, I can, I can agree. give him that nod. Julius I, Irving, Doctor J, absolutely. I agree, hundred percent. There's, oh, hundred percent. Yeah, Patrick Ewing, definitely. Walt yeah. Frazier, Walt Clyde yeah. Frazier, definitely. Kevin Garnett, yeah. I mean, first high school player to come out in over twenty years. Definitely give him that. George Gervin, yeah. Hal Greer. James Harden, no. James Harden's a hard no. Hard no for me. I mean, yeah, I know. And I know the argument is he's – people consider him the best pure scorer to ever play the game. I just mm. – That doesn't make him the top. Again, like, yeah. The top like, like, of all time. I think what got him on this list is he's got an MVP. And I, I feel like some of these guys are on here because they got an MVP – and there's not been 75 MVPs, obviously, because right. you've had like LeBron's had won multiple, multiple Giannis has won multiple, MJ won multiple. Um, right. So, you know, 
So he mm -hmm. he may have just gotten on this list because because it's a name recognition. He, he has an MVP. Too. You got to get name recognition in there as well. Uh, John Havlicek, Elvin Hayes, Allen Iverson. Yeah, I mean, dude, it's not every day that you would see a six one guy at shooting guard doing what he did crossing up guys he's, left and right. he single handedly carried that sixers franchise for years got them not only did he carry them he got them to the finals and he stole a game against shaq and kobe that alone yep. is deserving of being considered a top five, 75 player absolutely absolutely lebron definitely i'm not the biggest lebron fan but you cannot deny what the man's done magic no. johnson definitely hundo sam jones not flash gordon but sam jones <laughs> yeah i'll give him that michael jordan definitely uh, jason little, little 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 iffy on the michael jordan one yeah i don't that's know if michael jordan I mean, what has he done yeah that's that's debate that's debate <laughs> <laughs> jason kidd see i don't know i mean isn't i don't he know the, wasn't he the ass assist leader let me see i mean J jason kidd got i mean I guess he, he came out and sort of showed that, you know, the assist game wasn't dead. He could get uh, it he's, done. He he's was, second. Okay. He, second he was like, yeah, so I, I can kind of give him that. Um, you know, he's second behind um, John Stockton mm -hmm. and just ahead of um, Magic. So, all right. Kawhi Leonard, no. I'm, 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 t I'm definitely no on the Kawhi. Yeah, it's, it's so no. hard with a lot of these modern guys. I feel like it's a lot of recency bias. And I agree. there's there's players that you could say that were uh, similar. Like I'm looking for one name in particular where. OK, yeah, Gary Payton is on here. OK, I, I was if Gary say, Payton wasn't on here. I <laughs> if Kawhi was on here and Gary Payton wasn't, then, oh, my gosh, like I this, mean, this this list would just be fraudulent. I'm going to be tweeting at, 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 at Adam Silver and, or, and be like, dude, what's going on? Like, Seriously. who made this team? Who, who I came up with this? I agree. Like, if Sean Kemp were on this list, I'd be like, no. Yeah. Dwight Howard. I uh, was gonna bring. I was gonna bring that up, and it's because of Dwight Howard's uh, accolades compared to someone like Damian Lillard, for instance, who is who is on this. Okay, so let me. Here's here's my thing about the Dwight versus Damian thing. Dwight was really, really wet, red hot, like the first five, six years. And then he gets hurt, and then he's just marginal at best. You know? Okay, but here's here's um, Dwight Howard's accolade. So mm -hmm. he's an NBA champion. Yeah, that was 2020. And he played a vital role on that. I, I'd give him that. But eight-time All-Star, five-time All-NBA first team, uh, All-NBA second, one All-Second team, Two-time All NBA third team, three-time Defensive Player of the Year, four-time All Defensive First Team, uh, uh, one All Defensive Second Team, uh, All Rookie First Team, five-time uh, NBA Rebounding Leader, two-time Blocks Leader, um, and yeah, yeah. But once again, this is a guy who he's got all the physical tools. If he would have been able to stay healthy and continue what? that dominance and, and the, that he had, and the and, and the biggest thing that hurt Dwight's career is as soon as he really started to kind of get into what we would consider like his prime, mm -hmm. the NBA flipped away and the big man, the traditional big man started to become a bit more obsolete. Not yeah. saying they're completely obsolete because I'm not, I'm not with, they're, they're not completely about, obsolete. But, but the problem is, is that what, if, if the NBA would have maintained its identity with the big man is concerned, he'd be the most dominant big man probably ever. Probably because that's that's what he that's what he was. That's what he was um, from 2004 but, to 2012 when he was with the Orlando Magic. Right, but injuries like that, and that Orlando the change Magic of the game had no reason to make an NBA Finals. Right, no, I absolutely and he agree. Got them to the NBA Finals, and it was I agree solely because of Dwight. If Dwight Howard would have come into the NBA around the same time as Shaq, it would have been the second coming of um, Bill Russell and Wilt Chamberlain, in my opinion. It, but it absolutely the game is. changed. The game changed. He got injured. And then he was never able to translate his game to the modern game. Yep. Um, so um, Damian Lillard, I mean, 
once again, this is modern day bias here. Um, I mean, he, he's a guy, you know, granted he he's doing the best he can on a team. That's just, just isn't able to get out of its way and get into the playoffs. And when it gets into the playoffs, it's not able to do what it needs to do. The man is carrying a team single-handedly and, even some of these greats, they didn't get to where they needed to be until they had help. Look at Michael Jordan until he got Scottie Pippen. Mm -hmm. Jerry Lucas, definitely Carl Malone. He's a piece of shit, but he's earned his spot. Um, yeah, I, I just, Cor I, I get, you know what? I, I, I mean, honestly, the thing is, though, Portland isn't going to go for the Ben Simmons. They're not going to take on that contract. And, if you got rid of Damian Lillard to get Ben Simmons, that is the downgrade of all downgrades. That's like going from Michael Jordan. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. So to like Harold here, I Minor. do like I do like this idea. I do like this idea for poor. I think it benefits both teams if they do this. Not saying that you are straight up trading Lillard for Simmons. You have like the only way this goes down is if um, the Sixers get their own heads out of their ass. And bite the bullet and say, we're going to have to trade Ben Simmons and either Matisse Thybul and maybe even Tyrese Maxey or maybe just one of them and a couple picks and a couple pick swaps. And the only thing we're getting in return is Damian Lillard. That's the only way this trade happens. But I don't know if the Sixers are willing to do that because they still think they should get three first round picks for Ben Simmons. They, they keep saying they want three first round picks. And then it's like, and then we also want a playmaker. That's not happening. That's not happening. That's and and you can say, you know, negotiating tactics. It's like, you know, oh, you know, you always start at your highest and then you negotiate down. There's no negotiating down from that because no one's going to want to give you a call. Not at all, especially not a guy who's shooting just disappears. Like, yeah, like, like if, if, if I'm like, for instance, let's say the Grizzlies were in this scenario. Let's say John Morant comes out tomorrow and he's like, I'm done with Memphis. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Get me out of here. Like, why would I ship a player that is going to do better for your franchise and three first round picks to get a guy that's going to set my franchise back potentially? Exactly. Why would I do that? That's stupid. Seriously. But I think that and while, while we're staying on this topic, and I don't want to stay on this for too long, I think Ben Simmons is also just he, he's, he's ruining his rep with the tactics that he's going by. Like. If this keeps going on, no one's going to want to touch him. What's going to probably end up happening if Philly, if I were Philly, is like, look, let's just say, argument's sake, we go the whole season. Ben Simmons is just done. He doesn't play for whatever reason. He just he ends up sitting out the whole season. Yeah, he's not even playing right now. They're playing. Yeah. They're playing the Knicks right now, and he's not playing. Mm -hmm. So you know what I do if he ends up not playing the entire season? Like he just sits out and he just plays these games and just sits out. I just cut him. You know what? Cut your losses, get rid of them, move on. And because he did this, A, he's going to get nowhere near the contract that he wants with another team. If another team even wants to bother to have a conversation with him. But that's <laughs> my thought. All right. So Moses Malone, if he's not on this list, it's suspect. Pistol Pete Maravich, same thing. Bob McAdoo, absolutely. Kevin McHale, yep. George Mikan, the first real big man, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Reggie Miller, yes. Yeah. Definitely Earl the Pearl Monroe. Yes. Steve Nash. He's an MVP. Again, uh, yeah, he's, yeah, he's, he's third in assists and he's got. I'll give him that. Yeah. Dirk Nowitzki. Yes. Hakeem Olajuwon. I, I will still say Dirk Nowitzki in my lifetime has the best championship out of anyone. I can give you that. Small market with Jason Kidd. Uh, mm -hmm. as his point guard, an aging Jason Kidd, but beats the Miami Heat big three. And Absolutely. when it when it's just like, you know, a, a blue collar team is basically, it was Jason Kidd and Sean Marion. Those were the other like big names. I give you Dirk. that. That's, that's not, not, not a big wrong. three. That's not, a, not like wrong. a 30 late, mid late thirties, Jason Kidd and Sean Marion, the guy with the most broken jump shot I've ever seen in my life that somehow went in. Tyson Chandler was on that team too. That's another name. I can't remember if Jason Terry was on that team or not. He may have. I think been. he was. I can't remember. I think, I think he, think was. he was. I think he's had like two. He had like two stints with the, uh, um, with the uh, uh, Mavs. I can't remember. But anyway, Dirk Nowitzki wasn't ex really earned that. He earned it. Yeah, like I love the Giannis one because again, it's a guy staying at home, winning a title. 
but it's just who Dirk beat makes Absolutely. it that much better. And and I remember he played a game sick too. He, he Dirk that had his count. own like had fl- Dirk had his own like little flu game. And I remember too. It should count as too. It should count because too. like the big three, LeBron, Bosch, and Wade were all making fun of Dirk for acting sick. Right. And he was like, he was really sick as all hell, but he yeah. went out there and got the job done. Bald. Hakeem Olajuwon, most definitely. Shaq, I yeah. I mean, Shaq changed the game. They had to change rules for Shaq. Okay. <laughs> Robert Parrish, yeah. I mean, he's he's probably one of the most underappreciated and underrated big men of all time, and he was just such an amazing player, so dominant for a lot of years. Chris Paul, yeah. I'll give it to him. I'll, I'll, I'll give Chris Paul credit where credit's due. I mean, granted, and I'll, I'll be the first to say that my idea on some of these modern guys, I don't think that they, I think that them in the modern game, it's going to be different because the, 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 the past game was a way more physical, but you know, I'll definitely give it to Chris Paul, Gary Payton, absolute the glove. I did not, sorry to interrupt. I did not realize Mark Jackson was fourth in the NBA in assists. Mark did not realize that dude. Mark Jackson was amazing. Like Mark Jackson, Did if Michael if Michael Jordan isn't on the Bulls, if the Bulls aren't the Bulls, the Knicks have at least two championships. I did not era. realize that. That's amazing. Congratulations, Mark. He's probably going to get passed by Chris Paul this season. But What's the that? fact that Mark Jackson is above the likes of Magic Johnson, Oscar Robinson, Isaiah Thomas, and assists, career assists. Yeah. Good for you, Mark. You learned some- I'm a big NBA guy and I never knew that. Learn something new every day. Good job, Mark. It's, Bob it's Pettit. The ja- it's the Jackson connection. It's the Jackson name. Sorry, I keep interrupting you. Go ahead. That's all right. Bob Pettit, that's a yeah. Paul, mm-hmm. Paul Pierce. I mean, I guess so. He kept the Celtics team together for a long time until they made those trades and got that until they got um Kevin Garnett and um Ray um Ray Allen there. Yeah. I mean, I guess that that's still kind of iffy to me. To be honest, yeah. Uh, Scotty Pippen for sure, Willis Reed um, mm-hmm. for sure, Oscar Robertson definitely, David Robinson yes, Dennis Rodman yes, Bill Russell yes, Dolph Shays I don't, I don't know. I mean, I guess, I guess, yeah, I guess I. That's cool, I guess. Yeah. Oh. He was middle of the road for me. He really was. But okay. All right. Yeah. Bill Sharman, don't squeeze him. <laughs> John Stockton is a definite. Isaiah I Thomas know. a definite. Nate Thurman, yeah. Wes Unsold, yeah. Dwayne Wade, yeah. Yeah. Bill yeah, Walton. He... I mean, yeah. Du- I mean, Dwayne Wade's just he's D Wade. He's the way, and and he got his before LeBron came. It's not like LeBron came and LeBron took over and he took a backseat. He got his before mm-hmm. LeBron came. Absolutely, and LeBron knew that was D Wade's team. Mm-hmm. And he knew it. Bill Walton, yeah. I mean, you want to talk about a guy who did a lot with very little time? Yeah, it's Bill Walton, Jerry West. Yeah, I mean, the logo is still he's him. the freaking logo. How can you be the logo and not be in the top seventy-five? My biggest contention, there's no way Russell Westbrook should be on this list. No way. Yeah, no. they've got no him on there again because of the MVPs and because he's averaged triple doubles. That's, that's why care. he's there. Russell Westbrook shouldn't even be anywhere near on this list at all. Number one, look at the main word in this thing here, team. Russell Westbrook <laughs> is not a team guy, all right? He's not. Him and James Harden are these guys that just sit there, and as long as they get their stats, they don't care. No. Lenny Wilkins, yes. Dominique Wilkins, yes. James Worthy, yes. Yes. Absolutely. The fact that, I mean, honestly, I would even throw, like, why is it, like, where's Tom Chambers? Tom Chambers was, like, the lone bright spot on a Phoenix Suns team for a lot of years and got a lot of work in. Um. My my biggest like and of course like these are like kind of the same players that everyone else agrees with about who got snubbed. Um 
but just like some names that pop to mind, like Pau Gasol was essential for Kobe going back to back once again. And I mean, people don't know too much about his Memphis years. They really didn't pay attention to him, but it was excellent with Memphis. And of course, when he gets trade for Kwame Brown, we get the, the amazing Stephen A rant of he's a bona fide scrub. The man <laughs> flat out cannot play. He's got small hands. <laughs> it's, one <of> gra- <laughs> it's one of the greatest rants of television history is it it, in your top five is it in your top five it is in my top five the kwame brown trade rant is in my top five of of tv rants um it's up there with uh we are who they thought they were i'm a man i'm 40 uh and then bill o'reilly live on air saying f it we'll do it live it's terrible (laughs) it sucks but we'll do it live uh though like it's a top tier top tier like live rants and angry reactions and uh, but I, like but pal yeah, no, t-mac it. um vince carter was another name that that people have have mentioned um i think that's kind of really and and dwight those are kind of like the four where it's like i i could see those guys getting in over some some of those other guys like one of them definitely should have gotten in over dame one of them definitely should have gotten in over ad one of them definitely should have gotten in over Russell Westbrook for sure, for sure. Yeah. So, but all right. So we're, we're out of time, but there's one thing that I want to say here. Um, Courtney, if you could put the link that you shared with me in um, Slack up so I can pull it up about that, um, that Texas legislation. I just want to give a really quick thought on that real quick. Mm-hmm. I'm not getting into a, a political debate. I'm not getting into any sort of politics. Here's the thing. First and foremost, I'm sick of politics. I'm sick of religion. I'm sick of it. I'm sick of people using politics and religion to be assholes to one another. I'm over it. I'm done with it. All right. If you've got a feeling on something, leave God out of it, leave politics out of it, and just be you. If you're going to be a dick, be a dick. Okay. (laughs) I'm sick of social media being this this place where everyone, these armchair political analysts and blah, 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 and these just absolute moron just nipple clamps thinking that there's something important when they're really not they're just shit bags with that being said governor greg abbott has signed a texas bill restricting transgender participation in school sports here's the thing greg gregory the stars of that night shine so bright deep in the heart, in the heart of texas of texas Here's the thing, Greg. Why are you even involved in this? Has anyone thought to talk to the kids? What do the kids want? What? I'm seeing all these adults screaming. Every time I hear these political yutzes and these religious zealots that are sitting there with freaking red hot cork shoved into various body parts. All I hear, you're all idiots. What do the kids want? Well, will somebody think of the children? Why don't you ask the children what they want? Why not? Instead of politicizing someone's existence, instead of politicizing someone's existence. I'm going to say it one more time. Instead of politicizing someone's existence of who they are and having the courage to be who they are, why don't you ask the kids what they want? Instead of clutching your little pearls, jumping in your little bully pulpits, why don't these heads of these athletic groups, you know, here in Pittsburgh, it's Whippy Ole and PIAA. Why don't these heads talk to the kids that are involved? They're the ones that play the games. Talk to them. See what they want. See how they feel. Let them have their own damn opinion. Because... And I'm not even going to try to speak for any of them. I'm not a kid. I'm not a teenager. I am not a high school athlete. 
I cannot speak for them, nor would I ever think to speak for them. Let them have the opinion. Let them say what they want in their sport. Let them say who they want to compete against. Bottom line is simple. Hey, do you guys have an issue with transgender participation in your school sports? No? Okay. Quit politicizing their lives and quit trying to force your agendas upon them. This is that helicopter parenting, that overt helicopter adult involvement in children's sports. This is why kids can't even enjoy sports anymore. This is why being a kid sucks nowadays because you have these, I don't want to get us in trouble with Twitch or with <laughs> YouTube. This is what happens when you have these adults, and I'm doing air quotes for those that are listening on the podcast side. These so-called adults that think that they're so smart, that think that it's up to them to think for kids. No, stop thinking for kids. They don't need you to think for them. That is the issue that every past generation has had with the current generation. They think they have to think for them. David Bowie, would, if you don't listen to the David Bowie song changes, okay? <laughs> Watch The Breakfast Club. Kids don't need you thinking for them. And the fact that you are going to politicize a child's who they see themselves as. You're sick. You're disgusting. Shame on you. And you know what? I don't like you. <laughs> you're yeah. not you're, you're not even important enough to make me sick. Yeah, and the the unfortunate thing about all of it is and you know, I'm I'm all about just let people live their lives. You know, I'm I I you know as le it's it's pretty much a laissez-faire approach to way how people live. Just let them live, stay out of their lives. Let them have the human experience and, you know, just just let people live and let them be happy. And, but right. then also let let people make their own group decisions. So, exactly. you know, if if school groups get together and they observe what's happening and they're like, we are OK with and in and, 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 and most of the time it's transgender women that are like this is what the subject is about where it's someone that is born biologically a male but is is, is a woman as female I mm -hmm. identifies as a woman and so um and they want to they want to play sports if they decide that they're okay with it then it should be allowed if there are if the schools aren't comfortable with it because they believe at a biological level because of, of 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 sciences that are involved behind it, not not in like a gender way, but in a, a scientific way. If they if they come to that realization, what it boils down, then you know. And if they say no, then I I don't I don't know. Just let you've got to have those conversations. And at the end of the day, if you don't like what the school has done, you can move you can move schools. This is why I'm all for. You know, school choice is find the place that agrees with you. Well, I mean, you know, not agrees with you in a sense where it's like they they tell me what yeah. I want to hear, so I'm going to go there. But it's 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 just that like if you have something like that, then you should have the choice to to move schools and go and go there, um, and you know the schools be fluid. And then at the at the end of the day, the saddest part is is that for for this group of people, it's politicized from from both sides and that's what that's what the worst thing about it is is you have people that are considered progressives and they push their they push other agendas along with them they're almost like like you know the um what they what they attach other things onto and it's like if you go against one thing oh well then you're you're transphobic and then you're all these other things and stuff like that. But then it's like, if you support 
women doing that, then it's like, you know, the right comes at you. And it's like, you don't trust science. You know, you don't believe in science. You don't believe in this. Mm -hmm. You don't believe in that. And so it, it becomes, like you said, a political debate instead of a debate on, on the ground level, which is yeah, what on it, human rights, which, which is what it should be. I agree. And the bottom line is this, and I'm going to, I'm going to end with this, not getting into any of the Dave Chappelle stuff at all, not even a little, but I will say this. If you don't agree, it don't mean you hate. And because mm -hmm. you, you know, just because you disagree don't mean you hate. Period. But the bottom line is, look, let these kids play. Let the kids determine what's in their sports. Seriously. I mean, I remember when I was in high school, there was a, there was a girl by the name. Well, she's a woman now because I was a year older than her. But at the time, we were kids. Mm -hmm. Cindy Dallas. Six foot, six foot one. I had the hugest crush on her because she is the most gorgeous girl. I remember I had the biggest crush on her and I was so afraid to tell her. I mean, terrified <laughs> to tell her. Like, because I didn't think she liked me because she was taller than me. She was an athlete. Everyone loved her. You know what I mean? And she could crush anybody at basketball. I mean, literally. She could box someone out. It didn't matter if they were a guy. And if they, she was going up against mm -hmm. a guy that was a little bit stronger, she just had the moves. It wouldn't matter to her. Bottom line is, look, man, let these kids decide what they want in their game, in their sport, in their lives. They don't need adults trying to think for them. Let it be. Just stop. I stop agree. politicizing life. Stop politicizing people. With that being said, like, share, and subscribe. All any and all of uh, any and all of a uh, vendetta sports media um content. If you want to check out what we've got going, you can go to vendettasportsmedia.com where you can check out anything and everything, all of our articles, all of our podcasts, all of our everything. Follow us on all social media. Just search Vendetta Sports Media or in the case of Twitter, media underscore Vendetta. But if you search Vendetta Sports Media, it's all going to come up. If you want to follow the show in and of itself, at on we're on Twitter exclusively at Tandemonium VSM. You can check us out on, I'm um, checking me out there on Sunday. I will be live tweeting the Steeler game. We'll even be here on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Vendetta Sports Media. Follow us on there as well. This Sunday, are we going to be doing the, um, are we going to be um, going live for a bit there, uh, J-Law? For what now? For the, for the football, for the game on Sunday. Sunday, yes. We will be back with that. Sorry. All right, so we're gonna be going. I was reading that. I apologize. So make sure, so make sure to check us out on Sunday here on Twitch.tv forward slash Vendetta Sports Media, and make sure you follow us on Twitch so you can get hit up whenever we go live. With that being said, thank you so much for everyone for watching. Thank you for everyone that works with this show behind the scenes. Hold on, hold on, time, time out, time out, time out, time out, time out. I'm seeing something here. This may be okay. breaking news. Breaking news. I love breaking I, news. I, I'm seeing something. This is from a. This is from, they're called Dolphins Nation. They're one of the leading reporting news sites for Miami. I just want to check if this is correct. Uh-oh. This is something. What is it? What is it? Yeah. They, 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 they're saying that Miami Dolphins have agreed to trade terms to acquire Deshaun Rostin from the Houston Texans. Um, they're the tweet that they are referencing is from someone named Barry Jackson it says Houston Chronicle reports Dolphins and Texans have agreed on trade terms for Watson. Dolphins want his legal issue resolved before consummating deal it says good luck at that. Chronicle suggests Watson wants clarity from Goodell on length of potential suspension. Good luck with that. Um, they also cite another tweet from this uh, Barry Jackson. Um, let me see where he is where he is associated. Uh, he is with the Miami Herald. Um, he, he also, say, so he goes on to say, these issues seem unlikely to be resolved slash clarified before Tuesday's deadline. Tuesday is the trade deadline for the NFL. And even though uh, the teams have reportedly agreed on compensation, nothing legally binds them, obviously, to complete the deal next spring or whenever there is resolution on those two issue so if this report is correct the terms are agreed upon it's just the paperwork has not been sent to the league office but as as long as it's 
even if it's a minute before the deadline, as long as that paperwork is signed by both GMs and sent to the league office, it goes through. So they have until November 2nd, so next Tuesday, to get this figured out. And for for Miami, if they are going to pull the trigger on this to see if they um, if what the, the suspension will be and what legal issues would be. Fair enough. I also saw a news report, and I can't remember where it came out of, so I apologize for that. Apparently, he has refused to settle. He's refused yeah, he's, to settle he's because refused to settle. he's fighting. He's refused to settle. He's going to fight, but and the main reason why he's not going to settle is because he doesn't want to sign an NDA. Which means he a, a lot of guys when they're in the wrong, they'll just settle to make it go away. He's fighting, yeah. so it's interesting. That's that just makes it very interesting. So yeah, all right then. We'll we'll keep on we'll keep eye on this. We'll definitely be talking about this more on Sunday afternoon. Um, what time are we going live on Sunday? I'm because I'm gonna come on there with you uh, since it's... since since Sunday since the Sundays turn into plotaholics. I mean plotaholics. I'm sorry. Uh-huh. <laughs> Since it turns into the Tandemonium Sports Show 2.0, yeah, every time I, you go live, because it makes me sick seeing you on there by yourself. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna come on while um, I'm so I'll be pulling double duty on Sunday. What time are we doing it's, this? It's it's what? What did what did the game start? The game started at one, right? On East Coast. Games are one, yeah. yeah East Coast. So usually it's like 15 minutes till. So like 12:45 Eastern time. All right. So check us out. 12:45 Eastern Standard Time, 11:45 Central, 10:45 uh, Mountain. And 9.45 Pacific. Check us out here at twitch.tv forward slash Vendetta Sports Media. With that being said, we got Courtney Don't Call a Plumber in the um, in the booth. Jefferson Legal up here as my co-host. I'm Brian Tan. We'll see you guys Sunday and then next week with all new Tandemonium Sports Show. Or should I say on Sunday, Tandemonium 2.0. See you then. Later!